Today we're going to look at daylighting, which is the use of natural daylight to produce lighting in order to eliminate the need for electric lighting. We've only had electricity for the last 150 years or so, so it's worthwhile thinking about what did people do before electricity? They must have had ideas. So let's go look at just some randomly chosen examples from history. Here's one from Egypt. And this temple goes way back to more than 1500 years before the Common Era. And you can see that what they have done here is use what are called clear stories, vertical windows in, um, in openings near the roof. So those bring light in. Thinking about um, how to orient the building to bring in light makes us turn to the Parthenon in Athens. At the bottom of the screen is a model of the Parthenon. I don't know if you are aware, but the original Parthenon was actually painted in bright multicolors. It was not white. It's white now because uh, it's very, very old and all the paint has eroded away, but originally it was quite colorful. And I don't know if you've ever been to Nashville, Tennessee, but in Nashville there is an exact replica, full scale, of the Parthenon. And <laughs> it was a, an odd happenstance Back in the 19th century, a Centennial Exposition was held in Nashville, and Nashville was already called the Athens of the South for some reason, and so city leaders got the idea, why don't we build a Parthenon? Not just a classic building, but why don't we build an exact replica of the Parthenon? So they did. And the reason for telling you that is because um, this statue that you see in the photograph up here is from the Nashville Parthenon. And wh what scholars know is that this, this temple was designed so that at a certain time of day, the morning sun would come in and shine on this statue of Athena and uh, she would be all lit up in a glorious way. I think I took this picture. I don't quite remember. I think I did. Uh, I've been to the Parthenon in Nashville and it's pretty interesting to experience what that was like. I hope that if you go to Nashville sometime, you get a chance to walk around in it. Then uh, here is one of many domes that the Romans built. The Romans were great engineers, as you probably know, and they developed the use of concrete, which allowed them to build domes. And so they would put uh, holes in the bottom of their, uh, sorry, in the top of their domes that would let light in. There's that one. Here's perhaps the most famous dome, the Pantheon. You can see it's very old. And it was designed so that an exact sphere would fit inside this building. Isn't that cool? And here is, uh, this is a painting from the 19th century, but uh, it gives you the idea of how sunlight would come in through that opening in the dome and light the floor. Here are some ruins from ancient Rome. Um, again, they are using clear story windows. And at the bottom is an artist's rendering. Then, oh, this is interesting. In the Middle Ages, there were a lot of, um, uh, what do you call them? Cathedrals built in Europe built out of stone. And stone is very heavy and very strong in compression, so they would have these thick walls built up holding these heavy masses. Then in, in the Gothic era and into the Renaissance, architects learned how to do something called flying buttresses, which I'll show you more of in the next slide. And with a buttress, you no longer had to have this 
thick, heavy wall all the way up, you could cut holes in the wall. You could make openings in the wall to let light in. Look at these. Uh, and you could have glass, thin panes of glass, maybe stained glass, maybe uh, clear glass. And you could have these halls that were filled with natural daylight. So what I want to show you, these are from, um, I think this one over here might be from might be King's Hall in Cambridge. What I want to show you in the next slide is Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. And this is particularly heart-wrenching now because um, of the fire that happened last year. And so this beautiful spire was destroyed. And it is not known yet whether the rest of the cathedral can be saved or not because of the damage. But this is what it looked like before the fire. And these stone arms coming out to the side are what are known as flying buttresses. Here's another view. So they uh, essentially take the loads from the heavy roof and walls and direct those loads down into the ground so that the walls themselves don't have to hold up as much weight. Finally, uh, if you look at buildings from the 19th century, when they still did not have electricity, you will notice that um, the buildings tended to be narrow. There tended to be windows all over on all sides. So we'll see more about that when we look at the strategy of side lighting. We'll see why that narrow buildings with windows on all sides are a good idea because they let light get all the way into all the rooms. And to deal with how do you have, I'm, I'm waving at the hotel at the top of the slide now. So here's a big old hotel, um, got a lot of floor area. If you don't have electricity and you're trying to get daylight into every room, how do you handle that? Well, you can't do it with a big, flat, square building. But what you can do is make these crenellations, make these wings in and out, in and out, so that every wing has windows on all sides and every wing has a narrow floor footprint. And so light can get into every room. And now we will go look at what are the principles we use to do natural daylighting.